Here's how I made this coffee mug planter for my coffee plant. I started with some scraps of fence board and two redwood 2x4s cut down to fit in the car. Then I went to the miter saw, set up a stop block at 13 inches, and cut 12 pieces for the staves. I installed a dado stack and raised the blade up to half an inch. Then set up a stop block and cut dados in all of the staves. I put back the regular blade and tilted it to 15 degrees to bevel one edge of all the staves. Then I moved the fence and beveled the other edge. I cut the remaining 2x4 into two pieces. Then ripped off one edge and ripped it to two inches wide. I took that piece to the miter saw and cut angled sections for the handle of the mug. The handle joints need to be strengthened with splines, so I cut a one half inch groove with a dado stack and a homemade tenoning jig. Then I resawed the remaining piece of 2x4 to 9 16 thick. And put it on the crosscut sled with a stop block to cut the splines. The splines were intentionally made too thick, so I had to go to the hand plane. Once all the splines fit, I glued the handle together using Tight Bond 3. The next day the glue had not dried much, either because of the moisture in the wood or the natural oils in the redwood. So I took apart the handle and re-glued it using epoxy instead. While the epoxy was curing, I used a slot cutting bit on the router table to cut grooves for biscuits between each stave. Then did a test assembly. These biscuits will help keep all the pieces aligned when I glue it up. I hand planed both faces of the handle to get a flat surface. Then I used a crosscut sled on the table saw to cut the ends of the handle at exactly 90 degrees. This will ensure that the handle goes straight into the mortises.
I drew a curve by hand and cut along that line with the bandsaw. Then I used the oscillating spindle sander to smooth out the inside curve and use the belt sander to smooth the outside curves, being careful not to sand the squared ends. I went back to the router table and used a large roundover bit to round the edges of the handle, being careful to leave the end flat. I did this in two passes, raising the bit after the first pass. Then I sanded the handle to 220 grit. I placed the handle against one of the staves and traced where it made contact. This is where the mortises will go. I used a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit to drill out the corners of the mortise. Then I went to the workbench and chiseled out all of the waste. I used a gouge to clean up the corners and pared down the sides of the mortise until I had a perfect fit. I did a test assembly of the whole thing and there were some gaps in the barrel due to the table saw cuts not being a perfect 15 degree angle. To fix the gaps, I put a couple of the barrel staves in my vise and hand planed the edges to slightly change the angle of the bevel. This created a perfect fit with no gaps. I traced the bottom of the barrel onto a piece of cardboard. Then cut out that template and traced it on some fence boards for the bottom of the planter. The bottom piece was a little too thick, so I hand planed it until it fit in the dados. I reassembled the barrel, gluing it into two halves with polyurethane glue and placing the bottom pieces in, but not gluing them in place. I wrapped the whole thing in parchment paper and pulled it tight with ratchet straps and bungee cords. The parchment paper will prevent the straps from being glued to the wood. I held the barrel with bench dogs and hand planed down all the high ridges. Then I marked the new ridges with a pencil and hand planed down all of those. Then I went over the whole barrel, rotating it and planing. After that, I went back to the router table and rounded over the inside and outside of the top with multiple passes. Mm -hmm. 
Then I put a smaller round over bit in the router and rounded the bottom of the mug. And sanded the whole thing to 220 grit. I put some polyurethane glue in the mortises and attached the handle. I had pre-drilled some screw holes in the barrel and the handle, and I was able to attach the upper screw using a flexible bit driver. For the lower screw, I had to use a 90 degree ratcheting bit driver. I finished the outside of the planter with a penetrating timber oil that has some red pigment, intended for redwood. Whenever I'm using a stain or a dye, I try to apply from the bottom to the top. This helps prevent drip marks. After letting it rest for a while, I wiped off the excess finish with some rags. I drilled some drainage holes into the bottom with a spade bit, then filled the planter with potting soil and planted my coffee plant. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and get the plans on my website. Bye.